All right, this is part two of the HO scale Ather Bombardia cap car DCC install. In this video, we are going to be wiring the decoder, the speakers, and the lights. And we're also going to do the programming and testing of the ESU Log Sound Select decoder. This is a diagram of the 21 pin MTC pinout. Uh, it's in German because it's the only diagram I can find that it's color coded. Here's a little backstory. The 21 pin MTC was originally created by the Germans as an alternative to the older 8 pin plug. 21 pins are used to carry out more lighting and sound functions than the 8 pin. Uh, the letters MTC is an abbreviation for Merklin Trix Connector. Merklin and Trix are two German model train makers who pioneered the design. The 21 pin plug is now found on most model train manufacturers in North America, with the exception of Backman and Walther's. There are actually 22 pins on the layout, but pin number 11 is intentionally blanked out so that the connector is keyed and decoders can't be installed backwards. We will be using the following pins for the DCC installation. Pin number 7 is the Lead Hinton, which is the red headlight function. I am probably butchering the German pronunciation, but uh, that's fine. I don't speak German and I don't really care. But if you are German and you're watching this, I do apologize. Pin number eight is the Leek Vorn, which is the front headlight. Pin number nine and 10 are for the loudspeaker or the speakers. Pin 14 and 15 are for auxiliary two and auxiliary one, which will be the left and right ditch lights in the cab car. Pin number 16 is the function common for lights. Pin number 18 and number 19 are for the motor, which we are not using because our cab car isn't powered. If you are doing a DCC installation for a locomotive, you would use pin number 18 and 19 for the motor. Pin number 21 and 22 I have already covered in the last video, which are the left and right track pickups. Here is a diagram of the 21 pin adapter board that I am using. I will be soldering the wires according to this diagram. I know I said I wouldn't be using color coded wires but I just found some today so I will be using it in the video. First thing I'm going to do is to cut the red and black pickup wires so that they are only 5 centimeters sticking out of the staircase of the car and then I'm going to strip the four wires, twist the red and black wires together, and then solder the red and black wires onto the adapter. Uh, I used a little bit too much flux, but that's okay, not a big deal. Solder the blue, green, purple, yellow, white, and brown wires onto the adapter plate. The end result should look something like this. Take the roll of the quick disconnect plugs and cut off a piece of 5 pins with the cutter. We're going to use the male plug of the pins for the shell of the car and the female plug for the chassis. So solder these wires to the female plug in the following order. Purple, white, blue, yellow, and green. You can use some of the shrink tubing to cover the exposed ends to prevent contact. You can see that I have put the blue wire, which is the function common in the middle, and then the front and rear headlights next to that, followed by auxiliary one and two functions at the ends. This is so that in the event that you plug the male plug into the female backwards, the lights will not be destroyed and they will still work, with the exception that the front and rear lights will be reversed. If you are adding interior lights to your car, you will need six pins in total. For six pins, the pin layout will be asymmetrical, so you'll have to come up with your own design to make sure that you don't wire them backwards or anything. Solder the brown wires to the speaker. I use black wires here because I don't have any brown wires. Again, I apologize for not having video of the soldering process because I can't really solder the wires and operate the camera at the same time. You'll just have to look at my photos of the completed work. The last part is soldering the LEDs onto the male plug. Take six of the 820 ohm resistors and twist two of them together. Then do the same for another two resistors. 
leave the center pin blank and solder the twisted pairs onto the pins that are immediately to the left and right of the center pin. Take four of the pre-wired LEDs and solder the black wires onto each end of the resistor. These lights will be the headlights and markers. You can dip one of the pairs of LEDs that will be used for the marker lights into a jar of Tamiya X27 clear red paint for a nice red light effect. Solder the last two individual resistors onto the two pins on the two edges. And then solder the black wires of the last two LEDs onto these resistors. These will be the dish lights. Lastly, twist all six red wires on the six LEDs together and solder onto the middle pin. Use shrink tubing to isolate the connections. Then plug the male plug into the female plug and make sure the orientation of the plug connection is correct. The red markers should be connected to the yellow wire going to the decoder. It's time to program the decoder. I plug the ESU Loxon Select decoder into the 21 pin adapter and put the cab car chassis onto the programming track. Open up your browser and go to ESU's website to download the sound file you want. I am using the ESU EMD 710G3C T2 sound file because it has the horn sound that I'm looking for. Open the downloaded file with the low programming software. The first thing I'm going to do is to change the address to match the roll number of the cab car, which is 200. I am going to disable the auxiliary functions that I am not using, which is 3, 4, 5, and 6. Next, I will be editing the function mapping. I disable the auto bell function and reassign the flashing ditch light grade crossing logic function from function 2 to function 4. This is so that I can control the flashing ditch lights independently of the horn and bell. I also delete the dynamic brake function that was previously assigned to function 4. I am going to set function 5 as the dimmer function here. Function 6 is already assigned to the dish lights, which is fine, but I am just going to add an extra condition of not function 5 to the dish light function so that the dish lights will turn off when I press F5 for the dimmer. I am also going to delete whatever that was on function 7 because I don't need it. Same goes for function 8, which is the prime mover. This is a cab car, so we don't need sounds of a EMD diesel engine. Lastly, I will also delete function 9, the drive hold function, because again, this is a cab car, and I will never use the full throttle function here. You may go into the function settings tab to change how fast the dish lights will flash. I personally set mine to flash a little bit faster, around 1.5 seconds. You can also change the grade crossing holding time, which is how long the ditch lights will continue to flash after you release the corresponding function button. After you are finished with the edits, turn on the programmer tab and then write sound data. Make sure the write decoder data and overwrite defaults with current values boxes are checked. And then press next to write the sounds and settings. This will take about 25 to 30 minutes, so be patient and do not touch the low programmer or the decoder at this time. The sound data has finished writing, and it's time to test things out. It's a good idea to tape the speaker to the table temporarily, so that it doesn't vibrate around when you test the sounds. I am also holding this strand of LEDs with the reverse action tweezer, so that I can show you the lights. Hit F0 to turn on the headlights. Headlights are good. Change the direction to turn on the markers. Back to the headlights. Headlights off. Function 6 turns on the ditch lights. Press function 4 to get the ditch lights to start flashing. Headlights on. Press function 4 again to turn off the dish light flash.
change direction for the marker lights, back to forward, dimmer on, dimmer off, dimmer on, dimmer off. Press function 1 for the bell and function 2 for the horn. Lastly, function 3 is the copper clank, if you ever decide to do some switching with this thing. This wraps up the part 2 video of the HO scale Athern Bombardier cab car DCC install, which was the wiring of the decoder, speaker and LEDs, and also the programming and testing of the decoder. Next time in part 3, I will go over installing the LEDs into the shell of the cap car and also putting the model back together along with finishing touches.